one of the themes that certainly seems to be coming out of uh, this G7 is that President Biden is looking to form a group of countries, a group of democracies that are going to push back on um, totalitarian regimes. China, Russia are the ones that are often talked about. How coordinated do you think the EU and the United States are going to be on this? Well, it's certainly going to be more coordinated than was the case uh, under the previous U.S. president. Um, but um, with all countries will look at their own bottom line. Each country cares more, more about its own interests than anything else, as it should be. But there'll still be more cooperation. The tone will be very polite, very cordial. Um, all leaders will want to work together. And there, there are a lot of subjects to work together on. Um, COVID, for example, that's, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to help solve that. And, and second is, um, is a climate. That's, that's very much uh, inter in the interest of all of the participants. And then finally, China. Um, China is a bit difficult to resolve because European countries have their own separate interests with China, mm -hmm. different from that of the U.S., but they'll, they'll, they'll talk about it. Ambassador, what, what would success when it comes to dealing with China look like? To me, success is a little bit more accommodation between G7 and, um, and, and China. Um, the U.S.-China relationship is still falling. I won't call it, I will not call it a free fall, but it's certain, we haven't reached bottom yet. Hmm. Um, and it's, part, and mo it's driven by national security. And it's also driven much by um, domestic politics in the U.S. It's very easy for a member of Congress, Republican and Democrat, to be critical of China to help, help his reelection, but also uh, because, in many, sense, in many regards, we are very concerned about uh, back doors, um, spying by Chinese uh, surveillance systems, uh, and so forth. So it's, it's, it's very difficult to get a good relationship between the two countries. But we have to try. Let's just talk about how much further to fall you think we have got. You say we haven't hit rock bottom. We've still got some way to go. How much further to go? How much worse do you think it could get? Well, um, Taiwan's an issue. Um, Taiwan is becoming much more of a, a hot button. Uh, the, the stronger pressures in the United States to be strengthen ties with Taiwan, to put pressure up against China. And, of course, that very much upsets China. It's in violation of the one China policy that we have with, uh, with, with uh, China and Taiwan. My hope is that we don't go too far, but we, we, that is becoming more of an issue. Mm -hmm. Add to that, add to that um, the more uh, efforts in the United States to cut back on technologies um, that might hinder U.S. independence. We don't want to rely too much on Chinese technology mm -hmm. and national security. Uh, we're, we're becoming a bit balkanized. Uh, some call it de uh, decoupling, but it's, it's kind of a, a balkanization that's happening. And it's, it's, it's and all major countries are facing the same pressures. So, Ambassador, you know um, President Biden extraordinarily well. And I wonder what you think he can bring to this conversation to really help move the relationship along between Europe and the U.S. in order to form some kind of united front against China. Like, what's his special skill set? <laughs> it's in um, President Biden's DNA to find solutions. Uh, he's very polite. He's very accommodating. He smiles a lot. <laughs> he listens. <laughs> he, he wants to try to find some agreement. He wants you to like him. And, um, but like him not just personally, but like him on, on substance. Now, he also is uh, quite dumb, I will say, uh, he cares more about values um, uh, than certainly did Donald Trump. Um, human rights is much more important to him. It was not very important to, to Donald Trump. And human rights and, and democratic values and, and Western liberal values are going to be very much a part of his conversation and part of his efforts to communicate with the other uh, uh, six leaders who have many of the same concerns, same values. That's, he'll push on that. How important is it that the G7 steps up and delivers vaccines to the rest of the world? If the G7 doesn't do it, will China do it? Well, China's certainly going to try. Um, early reports are that uh, Chinese vaccines are OK. They're not nearly as good as the Western vaccines, like Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, and even the Glasgow, for example. But it's very important that um, 
G7 follow up on President Biden's uh, proposal to send um, uh, vaccine to developing countries for a lot of reasons. One, it's the right thing to do uh, because otherwise we're going to have a greater imbalance and a greater inequality between wealthier countries and, and less wealthy countries. Second, it's a good counterbalance against China. China will try. China will try very hard to exercise influence as much as it can uh, in countries through COVID, through infrastructure, um, through a standard setting. Um, they'll, they'll try. They're very good at it, and, they'll, they'll, and they're very effective.